Ian, and this is your Move of the Week. Today I got Johnny Bravo here, codenamed Johnny Bravo. I don't know his real name. And uh, this week we're gonna do an arm triangle from the mount. So I'm gonna switch base and mount. You always switch base and mount. Don't try to jump on top of the guy. And that's why I like this side control better than this one. Because when you switch base here, the guy can't see what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? He can't see that I'm pushing his legs out. I also may back up and grab my own foot and do a sneaky one and mount, right? Then I always turn my elbows out. What I'm looking for is the guy to have a weak elbow like open like this and I'm gonna come here and trap the point and start to walk it up and also cross face him and turn his head this way so I know that he can only oofa this way, right? And I can post on my forehead, never on the side. I'm gonna start to move this up like this. And what this is doing is making a lot of bad pressure for him and like he'll try to like straighten his arm or buck. Now I can go like this and I wanna make sure that it's not on his face, but on his neck. And then I wanna to listen to the phone. I am then gonna grab my middle finger to his armpit and I'm gonna slowly put my foot across and then cut out like this. I cannot grab my, behind my head, so I grab my own forearm and I sprawl and I start to just walk a little bit around like this. Okay? There are different ones, like Luke, he likes to come here and sit you up and squeeze there. I don't like that one, I'm short, the people come on top. <laughs> so, I have side control. I always got my, my hand here on the hip. Right, I got my weight on my toes with my knees off the floor. I come in, I switch base, make sure I got toes in the back there. I start scooting my butt back to make a little bit more of an angle because I'm not so flexible. And then look, I grab my own foot, and I string it through and I'm out. And then elbows out. See, then I can take my hands off the floor. And then look, when I can, I'm gonna come here and pull his head and turn his face. And then look, I'm gonna walk this elbow up, 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 up. And then listen to the phone. If I can, I grab the armpit with my middle finger. I'm gonna take my hand, put it over here, and then look, knee on stomach, and then I can dismount. And then I dismount, switching my base. I grab my own arm. If I can, I grab behind my head, and I start to walk and squeeze like Mataleon. One more time for the stupid people. There's a bunch of versions of this. It's a head and arm choke. We got taught that it was called an auger choke. We never called it Dars or boa constrictor choke or whatever. The important thing here, switch base and back that ass up. Make sure your toes are on the ground. I now can grab my own foot and mount. And look, right away I got the elbow open and I got the cross face. So now I got hooked in and now I start to walk this arm up. Start to walk it up all the way to here. If I can, get it tight like this. I go knee on stomach here, dismount, and grab my own forearm and start to squeeze and walk in a flat motion. And you get your arm triangle choke from the mount. Uh, uh, the last quarter of this year is still open for seminars. Contact me at Kurt at KurtOsroom.com. Uh, this is Johnny Bravo. He was the original owner of Counter Move. And uh, go fucking train. Fuck you, Isis. And uh, go train. All deep. to let Kurt use this fantastic collar here to help drain her ears along with the rest of his beer. We're uh, here at Half Gracie. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're gonna aspirate her cauliflower ear, which is funny because a lot of normal doctors will see this and they don't know what it is. Um, I don't know why. I mean, it's pretty common, but they usually are very good at studying books and then when they see something up close and personal, they don't know what it is. So, I have brand new needle and syringe. I like to use a big gauge needle so it aspirates it quickly and takes out more fluid. Everything, of course, is I've acquired through people I know. <laughs> and um, so we got brand new everything, I'm clean, everything's sterile. And um, you're gonna go bevel up like this and I load it a little bit with a little bit of air in there so it does back pressure. So I like to go here in the bottom where, the, where it's filled and you just put it just a little bit in there and Laura likes being a good sport and then I use that and then we start to get the fluid out. And there will be not so much this time. Got that much, that's not so much. But you wanna put that in your sharps container and clean it very good. Oh, we got a good little leak. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's good for the reality. The reality of it is there's blood inside your body. So now that we got it clean, Now I can clone Lorelei in the <laughs> laboratory. <laughs> there we go. So after that, of course, you're gonna take your kit, which if you loan it to other people, you wanna clean it completely when you get it back. It usually comes with yourself a little antibiotic and some uh, alcohol swabs. And then you can pick the size of the magnet that you want to use. For instance, I think this will fit better in there. And she's still leaking pretty good, which is good. Sure. That's okay. Yep. That means there was a little bit more fluid in there. Or I stabbed her in the brain. <laughs> Thanks, Lorelai. I'm really good at this doctor and shit. <laughs> magnet and your opposing magnet for the back depending on the size of your ear. And these so the, they are pretty powerful and they will put the swelling under pressure so you put this one on the inside here and put this one on the back side like that. And then what's best is like I got taught heat or ice and pressure. Uh, don't stab your own ear with razor blades. <laughs> it'll compromise the structure of the ear and it'll fall and look like a pot sticker. But here with Kali Cure, once again, ready to train again. <laughs> Thanks, Lorelai. Thanks, Kurt. <laughs>